Does RT stand for road and track or red and topless? Well, if you said red and topless or road and track, you're right either way, although the factory authorized version stands for road and track. This 1970 Dodge Coronet RT440 convertible is a really cool car. Now, they didn't make a whole lot of these things, but it was a car that was big so you could fit a lot of people in it and use it every day, but that 440 under the hood made it a very potent stoplight drag racer. So the RT actually stands for road and track, and we're pretty sure Dodge meant drag strip when they say track. This car has torsion bars in the front suspension, leaf springs in the rear, and drum brakes all the way around, so it's much better suited to go in a straight line than on a twisty This road car course. is built on the B body platform, and it is said that on the Super B version, which is a very similar body style to this car, the designer said that the grills and the bumpers surrounding the headlights were designed to be shaped like the wings of a bee. Uh, and the Super B meant a super version of the B body. In this case, this one's a Coronet RT, but it still has that asymmetric chrome surrounded B wing grill with the four headlights and the blacked out grill treatment. The hood meets the bumper in the center of the car with an RT badge on the hood, and then just below it, there's a large air intake opening uh, to make sure that that 440 Magnum stays cool. Another very cool styling element on this car is the awesome hood scoop. Uh, it's got dual openings in the front with a very aggressive but sleek profile, and we like how it has the 440 Magnum block letters on the side, letting people know that you've got something serious under the hood. Only 236 people ordered up a 70 Coronet RT convertible with the 440 under the hood. And this one has the black bumblebee stripe around the tail. Of course, you've got your RT badged side extractors on the quarters. Uh, this one's got a black convertible top and black seats. Uh, the 440 Magnum hood scoop, which is a neat touch in the front. And this uh, rally red paint really looks hot in the sun. Of course, the black seats are really hot in the sun. The rear of the car echoes the design of the front. Uh, the taillights are also shaped in kind of an oblong asymmetrical housing. The rear panel is blacked out and we like how tightly fitting the rear bumper is up against the quarter panels. And this is a big long car but the styling is very dramatic. It kind of has that coke bottle style that was very popular in those days. There is some bright work on this car. It does have a full length stainless steel rocker molding front to back. Uh, and of course your chrome bumpers and the 15 by 7 inch rally wheels and their polished lip uh, and of course the dual exhaust tips out in the back. But other than that, you've got a sea of rally red. The Dodge Magnum 440 was rated at 375 horsepower and 480 foot-pounds of torque at uh, 9.7 to 1 compression and they beefed up the bottom end of these for 1970 with stronger connecting rods and a stronger crankshaft because they knew these cars would take a lot of abuse on the road or the track. One thing that's interesting when you open the hood on a Dodge is all of the firewall and inner fenders and body panels under the hood are all painted the same color as the exterior of the car. So you've got a lot of red and black with the air cleaner and the hoses, uh, but it's a nice detail that they carried the exterior paint inside and not just painted everything black. Dodge was a little bit ahead of the curve with some of the technology to make this engine run. On the firewall, you see a box uh, that's a solid state ignition module, something that Ford and GM cars didn't have for another few years. And even though this is a big car, the 440 Magnum with the automatic transmission and the eight and three quarter inch sure grip differential pushed this car to a zero to 60 time of about six seconds and uh, 1380s at 98 miles an hour according to Muscle Car Review Magazine. So it was big, but for the track part, it was fast. This car showing 64,000 miles on it and it looks like that sure grip differential might be a little loose judging by the one-legged burnout. Inside the RT, uh, it was a comfortable place to be. You had some high back bucket seats and a full-width bench seat in the rear, make it so you can bring a lot of passengers along. 
the theme on the inside of this car is all wood grain and black vinyl. Uh, there's wood grain on the doors, across the whole width of the dashboard, and running up and down the full length center console on the floor, which is where the automatic shifter is. There's not a lot of options on this car. It has uh, an AM radio, uh, a 150 mile an hour speedometer, but interestingly only reads to 15. Dodge left off that extra zero. Maybe they're trying to save space to get enough numbers to go all the way up to 150. Looking from left to right, there's the alternator gauge, the fuel gauge, of course that big sweep speedometer, a temp gauge, and an 8,000 RPM in-dash tachometer. This one also has the remote-controlled driver's side chrome bullet side mirror. And interestingly, this car has a power top, but it does not have power brakes. The Brothers Collection is home to a lot of original and restored Dodge, Chrysler, and Plymouth cars. Uh, this one is a restored car, but it fits in very nicely with the others in the collection. Are you more of a pony car fan, or do you like the big sleds like our Coronet Convertible? Let us know on the Facebook page. And now we've got a mailing list on our website. You can sign up there, and we'll keep you posted on all the cool cars on Muscle Car of the Week.